Hello, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. And, uh, we're a little wibbly-wobbly back here. But I mean, that's as expected. We've got a rover that has a door on hinges that has these catwalks on a piston, which then has magnetic plates attached to them on more pistons, to another rover with modded wings. Just a few things there that could cause some wiggle. <laughs> oh, yes. This is stupid, and I love it. But here we are, continuing along. Our, I think we just barely see it there on the horizon, is the salvage that we want to do. We're continuing on with the same day as we left it off last time. So it's going to get dark soon. Uh, but we'll probably be heading on from the salvage here and driving off to our next spot before it gets too terribly dark. I also want to do some upgrades to this bison. After thinking about it and having people tell me on my Discord, why didn't I just put hinges on the wings so that I could fold them up like some smart person would do. You must realize that I am not smart. <laughs> and that I forgot such an obvious thing to do. Which probably shouldn't take me that long. I mean, the wings didn't take that long to put on in the first place. I'll just cut them off and uh, put on some hinges and maybe want to do a rotor. Because there's two different ways I was thinking about it. I can either put, essentially, um, like you can see, there, there are five sections long of the wing blocks. On the second section, I could put a double hinge, which would allow the thing to fold back completely on itself, and then the thing would probably fit into the back of the master dog. Or, you put a hinge and a rotor, and what that would allow you to do is to first spin it so that the wings are like, uh, like if you look at it from the side, they'd be like facing upwards, and then fold them back along, sort of like it's like sweeping the wings back, and then that might fit into the rover as well. I don't know. But here we are at the salvage. We got a wonderful thing to salvage. Uh, we need to hippity hop down there. I'm not sure how much I actually want to take from this thing. Um, the turrets are obviously friendly to me and... Oh, there's some missiles. Okay. I will take the missile containers because that has like platinum and stuff in it. So that is excellent. We'll take all of those. What about the rest of this thing? 60 uranium. Yes, please. I will take 60 uranium. Uh, there's some ammunition in all these interior turrets, but just 19 rockets. Like, 19 missiles in each one of these rocket launchers. I will take them all. Thank you. That is going to be great. I might even have enough that I would consider putting a uh, missile turret on the bison or something like that because then I could actually uh, feed it with enough missiles because we've salvaged enough I definitely didn't get enough platinum uh, to make my own I got 53.7 out of this run from all my salvaging and how much does a single missile take these days 0 0.01. It's actually not that much. But it needs uranium as well. Man, missiles can be expensive. Uh, can I put stuff in through this thing? I can't. Because it's got the filter before it. Uh, I kind of want to have cargo access right down here. So I don't always have to drop these drills down for it. Ah, uh, speaking of which, I'm going to catch up my spectator camera. 
Where do I have conveyors here? That's just right on the bottom of that, and that basically cuts off my conveyor access to these bottom areas. I really have, like, no conveyor access down here. Aside from, like, going to the bottom of one of these survival kit things. Like, part of my, uh, the food processing. Or the medical station. Yeah, other than that, all my conveyors are nice and high up in the air. Ah, yeah, well, at least we'll drop these drills down. And the drills can do their thing. On drilling platform. Pistons reverse. So just get me a little bit of dirt and also access to storage. Because I can put stuff away through here. There we go. Just get to cargo. Or yeah, just deposit. Cargo. Unfortunately, I have to manually pull over the missiles because it's not part of the things that auto deposit, which is very annoying. I can carry more than that per trip. What do I got here? 16 per trip. So basically just one trip per missile thing. Oh, we'll be done this in just a couple minutes. We don't have to worry about cutting this out. So let's see. We also... So there's two more of these, right? Uh, for missile launchers. Yeah, two more. My guess is that they're buried. So it's time to d -d -d dig. And, oh, my guess is absolutely correct, as this is the front of them. And it'll probably be mirrored on the other side as well, so it should be pretty easy to find them. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, I, I don't have a need for cobalt, so I don't need to uh, get the grids or anything from these thrusters, even if they have their grids. Now, this isn't plate. So, ah, it has 35 grids. So yeah, if I needed the cobalt and I needed to get some metal grids, then sure, I could salvage those, but I really don't. I just want these, because the uranium in them is delicious. There's also the uh, uranium in the reactor, wherever that is. It's probably somewhere in the middle of the ship. We're going to have to dig it out. And then that's everything that the, this thing has useful. Hide the empty. Yep, uranium. Some ice. I probably still have like a ton of ice. And then just some random uh, clips, which I do not need. I need the full ammo boxes. Uh, what do I have for ice? Ba -ba -ba -ba, there. Actually. Not much ice left. <laughs> cool. Uh, but for ammo, we've got... 686. Ammo containers are... Rotor guns are... Fully stockpiled. Nothing they need. So, I need reactors. If I was a reactor, where would I be? There's a beacon there. And there's a reactor there. Well, that was easy. And then this guy has got some reactor components and stuff, so we'll knock him down real quick. Uh -oh. oh, ship is wiggling forward. Drilling pistons reverse, drills off. Yeah. This thing really likes it when the you leave them in the ground for too long, the ship wiggles forward, and those things uh, decide, oh, I'm just going to eat the ground. Uh, oh, but this does have a full hydrogen tank. It is chocolate block full, but I wonder, is that worth it? Do I need... O2 at, uh, H2 at this point. No, I'm actually full. Nice. And there was some points during this run where I would be like, oh god, the savior. I have a full tank. Oh, sort of thing. But, I mean, my batteries are 
what are, they, what are we at? We're at store power. We're at two thirds for my six batteries here. So more than a bank to to run this sh this rover for a while. We've got 13 hours of power. We're doing good. I think we want to find. We'll get a little bit more distance towards the Badlands just now, and then we'll find a nice flat space where I can park up. Uh, at some point, we're gonna have to uh, bring the Raven over because we don't want to drive too far before we leave it behind. But a nice flat spot. We'll park up. We'll let the Bison down onto the ground. We'll fix its wings so that it can actually get into the get into the back of the ship here and why not we'll mark up some more oars that's what we're down here for as we bounce off some titanium trees and we're only seven and a half k from badlands because i believe how i marked it up is that this this uh this area here is the Badlands. And I, I... I was half questioning myself last time when I was saying, like, uh, this looks like Southern Alberta. And I had to go and, like, Google search, like, does it? And I was like, yes, it does. <laughs> it actually does look like it. Because they've got these, uh, little craggy bits and uh, sort of sandstone killers kind of thing that have been worn down through uh, rain and wind and stuff like that. It does look like that. Ooh, iron nickel. Maybe, if I remember in post-editing, I will put some photos from Google search so that uh, you can see what I'm talking about. Hence why I call this the Badlands. more iron nickel. I already marked it up. It's probably just the same veins. And this... Is this like a tiny, tiny patch of ice? It totally is. But it is deep. What is this ice? Like 50 meters under the surface? 30 meters under the surface. Damn. That is some deep ice. <laughs> oh my god, I'm starting to see things. I was holding down alt here so I could move my camera around, and the little six on the end of the Badlands was like sticking out beside a one of the little outcroppings, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh god, is that like a, a structure? It's blue! Ah! Like, <laughs> thinking that I was gonna get attacked by some uh, sort of sort of base or something. Oh god. <laughs> I am slowly losing it. Freaking driving alone for all of these all of these many, many weeks on this planet. Hopefully the company still uh, remembers that I'm here and that they are going to uh, come down and pick me up <laughs> as I make the rendezvous in a few days. Okay, so we're making some good time here, getting towards the Badland marker. It's just 4k away, but we are starting to get a little far away from where the Raven is. So, and also, the sun's going down, so I kind of want to make sure that I get this guy in the air before uh, I get too far away from him. He's got an hour of under thrust power. Probably. Uh, oh, I'm further over this way. Oh, that's right, because I uh, took a. Uh, I took a little diversion there to the left in order to go to the, to the, uh, to the wreck. So this guy can fly directly to the Badlands and not have to uh, do that little diversion. 
So you can see uh, the bison and uh, the gopher over there on the left of that signal. And this guy will go right over this uh, up, a little bit rougher terrain. Still not too bad. This uh, this area here is definitely not that bad of a drive. You just gotta sneak your way through all of these bits, and there's pretty obvious pathways that you can take to drive. It is not too terribly bad. Oh, there I am on the. There I am on the left. <laughs> right there. Oh god, gotta aim at it. Hey, there's the Mastodon. We'll aim back towards where we are actually wanting to go. And get that uh, autopilot taking me there. As I do not want to land this thing in the dark. It does not have any lights on it. And uh, I want to make sure that I can get this thing down before it is too terribly dark at this waypoint and then I can drive it there drive the, the rover there and then finish everything off so we'll come on down for a landing I am not sure if that believe yes that my auto thruster was off I just couldn't tell if I'd actually hit it or not Take a nice wide loop de loop here. Turn to bleed off that speed. Come on down. Ooh, that train's a little train's a little rough here. I might have to do a little bit of a and slow landing as the terrain here kind of sucks right before impact I can flare hard to kill a bunch of speed and then oh, there we go and right at point park it up turn off my dampeners got a day's power just to sit there more than enough. I just need to drive another three kilometers. Probably ignore a little bit of this uh, ores. Don't need to mark every last little thing. But that terrain there was a little bit tougher for the uh, the Raven to land on. So. I wonder how to, how it would be to drive it once I get there. Yeah, we got a little bit of these craggy outcroppings. Oh, that's not looking fun to drive at all. Uh, another kilometer to the Raven, eh? That's no good. Still plenty of clearance. Uh, the question is... Where do I make my entrance into this area? How do I make my entrance in a nice way? Because I have a feeling that I just need to get into it and just sort of go along the top of the ridge lines. Uh, I'm not sure. But for now, I'm definitely making this corner. And come on, baby. You got the turning radius of a boat. It's because this thing practically is a boat. Oh, my God. Fine, we'll back up. And we'll take it from another angle. This thing is starting to get too fat for its own good. But this looks like a pass through there. Excellent. Ah, uh, now will I be able to get up this little bit of a hill here? Do I have the clearance for this? Uh, with all of my big thrusters in the bank, I feel like I should have enough oomph to just push myself up this hill. Yes, I do. 
You good there, Bison? A little wiggly, but still good. And now, this is what I was talking about. Once we got up top here, we just got to keep ourselves out of these potholes, really. Which is probably easier said than done. But, again, this will be like... Got to have my suspension keep me up high. As I, my wheels on the first side are literally just hanging in the air. Okay, good. That's good. Go over that bit of suspension. This next bit is easy. And the raven is right there. Okay, okay. This is, we're doing fine here. We're passing through. No problems at all. We have achieved the Badlands. Right in the middle of the most awkward spot we could possibly mark up as the Badlands. We've done it. Bada boom. Another waypoint. So we take a look at our GPS's here. The Badlands is our last waypoint in terms of where we needed to go. So what's next? Why, back home to the Horseshoe Oasis, which just so happens to be only nine kilometers away. We could just drive there this episode. The whole thing could be done today, but that's no fun. Uh, we got the Raven there, it's ready to go. We could probably just take the Raven. Uh, I'd like to double check its uh, its power levels. Oh, all right. Easy peasy for me to grab these. Just grab it through there. <laughs> I'd like to double check the Raven's power levels, which we can do just by going to remote access. So its batteries are at 900 kilowatts of one megawatt. So it is 90% power. It's got plenty of juice on it. So I shall take it. Oh, I should probably shouldn't have gotten out of the Raven's control. And we should take this bad boy here. And fly it on over to the Horseshoe Oasis. And park it up. Because it is done. There is no more need for scouting in this playthrough. We'll just get some height here. And then we'll tell it to level off and hold. And we can just watch our way through what we'll have to drive through the horseshoe to get to the horseshoe oasis. So, pretty bumpy terrain. There's some ridge lines, there's some outcroppings. Uh, it's going to not be a straight drive. This is going to be definitely a. Uh, just like having to weave our way through all of this. Um. But, we'll definitely be able to get it done. The Mastodon is proving more than capable of making such actions. And you can see in some places here, once you get onto a nice area, looks like there's a, a spot there on the left where we can get up on the next ridge line kind of feel. And if I need to, I can uh, move around to the sides. And is that... Oh God, that's a, a certain... Pulling hard, pulling hard. Right? Yeah, that's an assert. Okay, you're not going to stay there unless I shut you down. Because then the assert will be pissed off from that. <laughs> Never mind then. So, we're going to have some entertainment in the, the last bit uh, before the end of the series. Because we're going to have it up. An assert that's going to be attacking us constantly as we try to get back to the horse who weighs I mean, honestly, that's kind of good. I kind of wish that that happens because it's more entertaining that way, then. So we'll probably get this guy back, we'll land him back behind where we are. Actually, anywhere, just here, just land him somewhere. Just so that the, uh, the raven's not going to be attacked by that assert and then 
we'll get the Mastodon going forward. And we'll just have to make the, the track. We'll be constantly attacked by cert drones as we navigate our way through this uh, bumpy maze of uh, rock outcroppings and cliff sides. And now just to kill our speed enough that we can come in for a halfway decent landing and oh, I brought home a fleeting rival drone. Turrets, do your worst. They should all be online. Everything should be functional. We'll just come in here for a landing as they uh, open up and hopefully rip that guy to shreds. Oh yeah, baby. Mwah. Absolutely delicious. I'm very happy I went home with the Raven as if I had landed in the Horseshoe Oasis, that fleeting rival would have just eaten my Raven and that would not have been good. Um, you can uh, park, turn off your dampeners, and then I can go back to the bison. Excellent. Ammo. We are good on ammo. We got 683 boxes. Okay, we need a flat area so that I can let the bison down, and then I can start working on it, and I can get its, uh, get its wings folded up and get it back inside the mastodon. And I feel like I'm never really going to truly finish the Mastodon. It was always a work in progress, and up right until the end, it's just going to be whatever I needed at the time. Truly utilitarian. And if I get around to it, I'll go back into the future and, like, spend some time and several hours and, like, rebuild it from scratch and, like, make it a block longer and, like, that kind of stuff. Just make everything exactly as I need it and want it. Uh, but this looks nice and flat here, so we park up, park, and let's go and, uh, fix this bison here. Yay. Oh, something I should probably do <laughs> before I, uh, make it flat. is sorry until I put it on the ground as I should make it flat again and then I should get this thing back on its wheels that might be a good idea um, magnetic plates we want to unlock and then we want to drop back down onto our wheels we're still parked up, but at least now we're on our wheels and we're not on those things. And once this thing is in position, we can just drive off and it'll be nice and easy. Ah, there we go. It's going down again. And... We're good. Okay. So now all I have to do is just park. And then slowly drive off. Perfection. Okay. Now, it, should not, it actually shouldn't take very long for me to redo these wings. I already know, like, what I want them to look like. I just need to slice them off and rebuild them. That'll be a hinge instead of a, a block. And then the rest of the wing is pretty much the same. I mean, realistically, I could reuse these wings. Like, I could uh, grab them with one of my ships. And I could hold them up and, like, snap them back into position that kind of stuff but honestly that just feels like clang would come out of the woodwork and eat my face right at the very end and I don't want clang to do that so I'm just going to uh, cut them off because I've got plenty of resources and this is just iron that's all I'm gonna lose nothing else there's no special resources here it is just iron okay so we need Hinge, hinge, wings, and then another two hinges on each side. So I can have the wings fold back upon them themselves. And these graded catwalks are freaking damaged. Again! Again! These things are always damaged! Ah! Oh, well, they're functional. Who cares? It's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Who needs to fix those things up? They're just, they'll just break again. 
Ugh. So. Hinges. Small hinges, though. So we'll go... There we go. Hinge. One, two. And then for each wing, two. And then that, two. Now we'll draw construction components. And then hinge parts. You need six of those as well. Four, five, six. Then I'll just need a few steel plates just to place the wings down. And once I got the, the hinges moving and stuff like that, then I can actually build up the wings proper. There we go. Oh my god, it's gotten dark. Uh, bice. Oh, you've lost a taillight. wonder when that happened, Mr. Bison. Turn on your lights, Bison. It is dark out. I can't see anything. Okie dokie. So, where did uh, these begin? We're going to want... Uh, not hinge part. We want hinge little one right there. And, oh, I can't remember what's the, the rule. You see how it has... If you look at it, it's got the two marks that are in the top left and none in the top right. Uh, I can't remember which way is which. Like... I'm going to just put them both in the same orientation, basically. So they're both going to be facing this way, and I want the two marks downwards. I wonder what that is. The two marks are downwards, and I weld that up, and I give this thing positive. It goes up. Okay, perfect. So the two marks downwards is the right way to do it. So two marks downwards, and that will hinge upwards with positive. Yes. Perfection. Okay. So on both of those hinges, call these ones wing bays. Bays. Call the other ones wing tips. So the wing bases, where we want a lower limit of zero and an upper limit of like 30 degrees. Because that's all I'm going to need for those. And then it's going to be wing wing, then double hinge. So that way the whole thing can like fold back upon itself. Because these things can only do 90. It's beautiful. It's going to work. So wings. And we want it on that. Uh, wing angle twos. If I can remember which orientation these were when they were placed, it was that orientation. And I want to take those hinges, which I might want to set to this other thing here, make them into a group. Uh, wing. Wing hinges. I want to reverse those. So I can bring my wings down. Into place. Nice. Reverse. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So then it'll be a block. And then it's another wing too. And then this is where it's going to be a a hinge and again I want to make sure that that double thing is down and then off of that hinge another hinge and then off of that hinge uh, more wing Okay, so those are two wing tips. Hinges. Wing tip. So what they should be is if I take those out and I make their lower limit zero, they should like snap into position, right? 
upper limits. So, stop doing that. Uh, 45 over the upper limit. Yeah, so it goes 45, 45, now it's pointing straight upwards. So if I make their upper limit on the tips to 90 and give them a velocity of 1, they should fall back up on themselves. Very nice. Now, they're going to hit those engines there, which is an unfortunate part. But then I can also lift the whole thing up. That. So we'll have to see. It might not be a f 90. That might not be the right thing to do. So the wing tips, we could reverse them, make their upper limit say 70 instead. So let's reverse them back in. So they both go 70. And it'll be pointing upwards, but it, uh, but it is, um, you know, folding in and at least limiting my side width so that I can actually get this thing into the Mastodon. And now I just have to copy that on the other side. So we'll go out wing angle 2, which ladders in the way I'm gonna screw this ladder I'm gonna reposition this ladder it's just in the way wingle two wing angle two and then we'll get the hinge and hinge Awesome construction components. Oh no. They probably went into one of the wings. It is alright. I'll just go get some parts for wings and it'll make up for it. There we go. Let's throw on the wing two on that. And uh, add those into the tips. Just the tips. <laughs> Wing hinges. Uh, we'll add everything into that group. So the tips again. We've got lower limit 0, upper limit of 70, velocity of 1. Bases will also give the velocity at that point one. So this is just folding up mode here. Everything's folding in. And then press the button, everything unfolds. I think it might look pretty good. Now for that ladder, where can I put that? Is a really good question. Where can I make that fit? Maybe there on the back. Think I can make that work on the back. Build planner. No, I don't anything that's added to build planner. Or I can just add it on the side of the engine here. That always works. Yeah, why not? Add it on the back of the engine. Always just climb up on top of the engine like that. That's uh, safe. Sure, that's safe. Get all this welded up. 
That's out to there. And then I had five. But I'm starting to think about if I have the space for that. Let's add one more. Uh, oh, I need more pieces for that. More parts. One more wing on each end. We won't do a wing angle two. We'll do a uh, wing angled one. Let's grab lots of parts here. So we can experiment. Wing angle one and then a wing straight, which is what we had before. And I just want to see what that looks like when I bent it all in. Because another problem is that unless I have one slightly faster or a more angle than the other, they're going to hit each other. So I'm going to have to def define one side being like slightly faster and the two tip hinges are going to be slightly um, more uh, angle to them so that the uh, the wings can unfurl properly. So, these two, this will be wingtip R, because it's wingtip right. I don't know what that slot number thing is. I pressed the wrong button. Uh, slot zero, unequipped to cancel. Press slot number to place hinge. I'm so confused. Hinge placed in slot one. Oh. Weird. I don't know what that was. So that is the wingtip R. So then we'll do the wingtip L. And we'll have the left one be the one that's slightly faster. So they will be 1.5s. And they will have a slightly higher limit of 80 degrees instead. So they will fold away a bit faster but fold away a bit more so that uh, the other one will work. And hopefully they won't get in each other's way. Now, the problem is going to be is that when I undo them, these this one over here is going to be going fast and it's going to scrape, right? No, it's just gonna miss. Oh my god, it's perfect. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. Bendy wings uh, getting built up. Okay, okay. And then we'll take all of those in the group and we'll hinge lock on off on them. Okay. So we'll undo our parking. And <laughs> I kind of want to save in case I explode this thing. But I kind of want to see how this thing flies. Whoa! <laughs> what was that? I thought I locked them. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, what happened there? They exploded! <laughs> the dips just decided to spontaneously self-destruct. Okay, maybe there was just too much wing there. Uh, let's, let's just try with this amount of wing. We'll just ramp off something. Oh, 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 no. No, I didn't like that. Did I take a piece of the undercarriage out? I totally did. That's all right. The bison needs some uh, bruises as well. How much damage? Oh, it's just nothing. It's just some armor. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay. So, it really 
really doesn't like having the wing blocks on subgrids. Good to know. Uh, ooh. Uh, let me park out for a second. Uh, these hinges. They have a... Uh, don't they have like a safety thing? Safety detach 5. How much like... How fast will stop when it's applied? No. Whatever it is, like a amount of force until it breaks. No, it doesn't seem to have that. Yeah, strange. Uh, I mean, it seems to give me at least, like, falling with style with only six wings instead of the, uh, I had like ten before, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is silly. Hey, well, at least I can fold these wings up and we'll, we'll be able to park in the in the Mastodon. Won't we? If I'm not able to fit here, this is going to be the absolute waste of my time. But I'll just blow these wings up and move on with my life. Come on. Ah, oh, we gotta fit. We gotta fit. Right? Right? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, we fit. We could actually even lower them down a little bit for the, uh... Let's see here, the bases. Lower them down to, like, 25 degrees? Yeah, something like that maybe is a bit better. What are they at now? Hinge base at 25? What about 20 degrees? Sure. <laughs> sure, this is this thing is just gonna keep getting silly. More and more I do to it. So might as well just get it locked in. Get it parked up. And whatever. <laughs> it's It's got some wings. It's back in here. The concept was interesting, but it kind of exploded. Uh, what button do I gotta press here again? Come on. I should learn one of these days on how to operate my own door. Ah, there we go. I just always forget which button does what. There we go! We can actually close the door. Good bison. Uh, you can have your batteries go on recharge if you want. That's, that's all right. <sighs> well, that was a silly experiment, but it is it is done. <laughs> we have spent the majority of the day and seemingly a lot of the night here playing around with that concept. Without much to shoot for it. Just a few explosions there at the end as a uh, clang decided to rear its ugly head and just be like, you don't, you shouldn't be doing this. You're pushing your limits, Kanajashi. I've been nice to you before, but now you're just pushing it. But at least now we've got the back door closed, which means that I have better clearance in the back. I should be able to make a lot more of these uh, hills and ridge lines here. We've got nine kilometers to go. But it's going to be nine kilometers under attack by the enemy. As there is an assertive base out there between me and my goal. Which we're going to have to get through. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. Good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.